if we look at um, one of the underlying premises of this series of conversations that I'm having that you so kindly agreed to participate in, it's really looking at the boundaries of humanity in a world where technology and yeah. science is saying we can design our own babies, we have artificial intelligence and machines who are going to think for us, how do we uh, explore those boundaries of humanities and, and do the arts offer us a lens to do so or um, do the arts have a responsibility to do so? I think this is kind of, that's a, a different question. We had, um, it's not long, not too long ago, maybe 10, 15 years, I was invited to a lot of think tanks from the technology world, world of technology, with artists. And I'm definitely not an artist, but you know, it's kind of music. No, am I? This is this kind of, um, you, you're part of the art world. And it was always like, I always felt a bit like they invited a harlequin to a, to a party. Um, this is, there are 500 engineers around the table. They were yeah, great. The and then we need an artist because we don't know exactly how to solve it. You know, this, and then there's an artist and he gives a kind of, yeah. That it's, it's, it's a kind of ingenuous. excuse, it's a kind of makes it nicer because we invited an important artist and so that doesn't help. The engineers go back to their lab or whatever and work on their topics and the artist goes back to this, go back to the studio. So it's that kind of interference yeah. doesn't help. What I mean is more this kind of self-understanding, the self-confidence of the art world and say we are part of it, we're definitely part of it. Maybe the segmentation doesn't help. Innovation comes from inspiration. No, it doesn't. Innovation comes from math, chemistry, physics. I hate it school. And anyhow, this is where it comes from. And uh, your imagination and your fantasy and your you know, you have creativity. To be into creativity, real. creativity comes from something. It doesn't come out of the blue. It's not like the Holy Ghost comes over you while you are in here. The Holy Ghost of creativity. That's not working. Alexander McQueen was a very hard worker, even if you spend a lot of time here in, in our archives uh, or collection. But uh, that was not the only inspiration. He knew how to do things. That what everybody says that he was just a brilliant tailor. The technical side. And he was a brilliant tailor. And then the other thing was on top of it. So I, I like that example. It's, it's about the real world outside. That's a great example. That's also a great example of, of, of creativity and innovation that really resonated with the public. Uh, but Absolutely. that perhaps the public didn't necessarily focus so much on the technical side, the expertise, the tailoring, the the expertise in use of fabric and all of that, but that's a great point. But it needs overlaps, so it's, if, you know, if engineering is just engineering, it doesn't work. It needs this kind of creative engineering. It needs the designer and the engineer coming together. We had uh, Norman Foster and uh, Richard Rogers here the other day, together with engineers from ARA. They worked together for the last 40, 50 years mm -hmm. on Bobo in Paris and so on. It's quite interesting how Richard said, Richard Rogers said, um, it wasn't my idea, it was Arab's idea. They called me, mm -hmm. uh, things like that. So it needs, the, in our we society, the, we have this, we, have, we, have, we like the artists and the other ones, are, they do this kind of, what you would say, what you would call in German, Schwarzbrot, dark bread, um, the ray bread, or whatever, it's the other one with the fancy cakes. Um, I like this cake. Um, <laughs> the, the, it's, it's, it, it's need, yeah, it needs the interaction, it needs both. And I think there are a lot of um, parts in our society right now where uh, developments in our society where we need not this, kind of, not this kind of segmentation. Mm 